Alrighty, Roo, and Cuckoo Kachu to you and all my nobodies not watching out there. We're just gonna pick up and continue on. So, we're back to poetry time. And, you know, they looks like they changed around the order, but I'm still gonna go talk to Yuri first, because that's who I kind of wrote the poem for, and I've been sort of sweet on. So, let's go there. Let's see what you've written for today. Oh, wow, you, like, recovered from that very well, almost as though that didn't happen. Which leads me to believe that, based on game design, that you're... All the... What's being said, the dialogue being said between us right now, is something that would have happened regardless of how I wrote the poem and what has happened prior. But the experience we just had was likely because the poem I wrote was aimed at you and I successfully hit those words more than I did anybody else. Like last time, it was probably uh, Sayori it, because I was just making the poem for me to be like, oh, even if I was trying to aim it at you, I didn't specifically choose just those words. Let's see what you've written for today. Okay. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Technique. How, how did you pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing? M maybe that's why? I mean, my name is Technique. Wink. I don't feel like you know how winking works. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> um... You did a good job explaining it. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Just gonna leave it at that. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. Exclamation point after dot dot dot. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess? It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing? It just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. I mean, wasn't that what she said? Wasn't that like the truest writing is for, for the self? Like, for oneself? Like, I actually sat there and thought about that. I thought that was some deep shit. I was like, that's, some, that's a good point. And besides, people will just laugh at me. They're all gonna laugh at you, no! No, that's, no, they're not. It's just, you're very shy and you don't let people in and I'm sure there's almost certainly a reason. But, you know, people are like that. People have reasons. Sometimes people are just introspective. People just shy. You know? Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. She's like, I don't even want to say that out loud because it makes me feel bad. I wonder why. Anyway. Do you want to share the poem that you wrote today? Oh, wow. Okay. I, like, will she be able to? Is this too much for her? I feel like I may have overstimulated her today. And I mean that in, like, the least sexual way possible. Just like, you know, this is a lot. Yeah, I do. If it's with you. See that? Okay, yeah. No, this, okay. The raccoon. Hey, I'm a trash panda. So, leans in. 
It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a, for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the skittering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. My bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an urge. Okay, getting concerned. The moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife. Again, back to the knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic pa Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Not as fond of this one as the last one. This one has some sort of leanings towards, like, like uh, low-key closet yandere. The, the obsession with the knife. That could mean other things, too, but... Like, I assume I'm the raccoon, and that she's sort of analyzing, you know, but not the best way to put me. You know, it's not the greatest, I mean, I like raccoons, but doesn't necessarily paint me in the best light. Not, like, directly demeaning, but... Yeah, I'm... It's a little too close to Monica's poem from last time that was like, hmm, that kind of feels uncomfortable a bit. And again, the knife. Just like, the knife is mentioned quite frequently. Um, hmm. It's just like, it doesn't seem like there's a direct harm thing, but it's sort of like this lesser creature becomes comfortable because I know that if I feed it it will come it will become more comfortable so I cut the bread with my knife and the, the raccoon comes and I cut the bread with my knife and it's just like you're real about the knife you know Hmm. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows the excitement. See, that's the that's the distressing part right there. It's like the Pavlovian response. It's like the knife itself is what she's focusing on rather than the bread. It's not that the bread's there. It's that, oh, the cutting knife means that I'm getting bread. And it's like that you're so focused on the bread knife. Is this called the bread knife? or No, it's called the raccoon. But feels mistitled. Feels like it should be called the bread knife. Um, and then a rush of blood. Classic. Yeah, slice the bread, and I feed myself again. It's like, but maybe she's the raccoon. But I don't think that's the case. I mean, it could be. That's a way to per perceive it. Maybe she's the raccoon and herself. And this is her sort of feelings. I'm not either. I'm her feelings that she's trying to express. Still, the focus on the knife is concerning. Because that last little bit 
Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Paz Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Which leaves it ambiguous as to whether or not she could be the raccoon. As well as, you know, she who cuts the bread. The rush of blood. That's what really makes that ominous. And then the classic Pavlovian conditioning makes it more clinical, which, yeah. Okay, well. Let's see what he has to say about that. Um, it was a little more daring than the one yesterday's. Yeah, no, it definitely was. And it had a far darker context. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't. I can't begin to imagine what this film is about. Yeah, I don't think you're smart enough to figure that out. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Are you going to be one of those quiet, stabby types? <laughs> Using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to be. What's, what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. I hope you're just like a taxidermist and not like it puts the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. What's in the box? What's in the box? I don't want to... You seem so sweet. But maybe I'm in a room full of people who like this is gonna be like in war games the only a strange game the only winning move was to not play like <laughs> that sucks i hope not your unusual hobbies this is the first you're speaking of and you focus on the knife so little concern it's those sort of things that i'm usually forced to keep to myself it's like So, 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 like, hints as to that other than through poetry? So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? But, because, because if somebody saw it and knew that I had just stabbed, I, I lure in small animals and stab them, people might have a problem with that. <laughs> They're embarrassing. Okay, maybe it means something else. Because embarrassing isn't... I don't know. And people would make fun of me. Yeah, no, that doesn't seem like the right words. And you're very specific about words. Don't you have anything like that technique? Well, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everybody has a little something like that. The best we can do is respect each other and our individualities. So that's a good answer. It's like... Yeah, it's like, my main thing is like, look, if you're not hurting somebody with whatever it is you're into, like, people are not being harmed by you, like, you know, like, I feel like, eh, you know, the best we can, yeah, um, even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable, after all, I... If I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I probably I would probably hate myself. I I might be ranting a little now, uh, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. But, okay, that was concerning, but ultimately not too much. But that was the girls that I wrote the poem for and we had a nice little moment and then to immediately follow it up with but my knife and I cut the bread and then the blood flows and, and I feed myself again and it's like huh okay we 